Hello and welcome to Phil Galloway Draws. Now in today's video, I'm going to take it right back to basics and show you my process for drawing heads and faces. Over the last couple of weeks since my last video, I've been really busy with client work and other things. So I haven't really had the chance of making a big new video. Gotta bring in the dollar. But I have been reading your lovely comments underneath my videos and one thing that's really cropped up quite a bit, um, people have been asking me, what's my process for drawing? How do I achieve those sketches at the beginning of the painting? And so I'm gonna talk you through how I do that. Now in my work, I get asked to do various things from storyboarding and scamps for early sketches for projects. I have to draw very realistically, kind of sports people or TV people or whatever for different projects. But I also do my own work, which is how I want to draw. And I'll show you how the fundamental rules that I will show you at the beginning follow through in each of those, but to different degrees. Now, there's a million and one videos on YouTube, there's tutorials on Instagram, there's things all over the internet about how to draw faces. It's one of the most basic and kind of first steps in portraiture, in artwork as a whole, and everyone approaches it different. And that's something to remember. You could follow all the rules in the world, all the techniques, the Loomis method, the Riley method, the Houston method, there's a million and one. But ultimately, you've got to find what you're comfortable with and produce what you want to in the end. It has to look what you see in your heart and what you see through your eyes, not through someone else's. So take on board a little bit of what I say, but be bold with your own art. Magpie bits from all over the internet, as my old art teacher used to tell me, if you're not learning, you're not living. And that's completely true. We can always learn new techniques, new styles, new, new ways of approaching things. But if we all followed the rules so tightly, we wouldn't have interesting art and interesting portraiture like we've seen throughout history, from Mendigliani to Giacometti to the uh, mannerism to abstract art to postmodernism, whatever it might be. And there's some fantastic artists out at, at the moment who, who pay no heed to these rules whatsoever. They draw whatever they want. You know, if they listen to internet trolls saying, oh, the, leg, the neck shouldn't be that large. The, why have you drawn the ears like that? Why is the face so narrow? we wouldn't have them. They would be scared away from doing their own thing. There's no set path to creating a great portrait. You can follow all the rules on, on the planet if you want, but it doesn't guarantee you getting the right result at the end. Ultimately, only you know what you want to put on paper or on screen. So, as the great poet Robert Frost said, sometimes it's better to tread the path less trodden. If that's right. Sorry, Robert, if I got that wrong. But basically, forge your own path. Play with it, be comfortable with it. It's you that's creating the art, not me, not anyone else on social media. And if people say, oh, that's wrong, it doesn't look like them, who cares? It's what you want to draw, it's in your style, and it's your honest viewpoint. But I hope it helps a little bit. If you've got any questions, do fire them into the comments below. So grab your stylus, grab your pencil, grab your paper, screen, whatever you're using, it doesn't really matter, and let's get to work. Right, so for today's video, I'm gonna be using Rebel 7 Pro, which is a new one for me. I usually use ArtRage or Procreate on the iPad, um, but I wanted to mix it up a little bit. I wanted to learn a new tool of the trade, so to speak, and it's fantastic. I'm still a bit rough around the edges, so bear with me. Um, but as you can see, I've got it open here on my Surface Studio 2. Um, just a little heads up. It's worth a look. It's on sale, I think, still at the moment. I got this just before Christmas and I've only been using it this last couple of days. Uh, but some of the paint effects and different things like that are fantastic, which will come in the second follow-up video of how we paint heads. So, first of all, just to kind of give you a little bit of a rough guide on what I do, my kind of core, they're not rules because I don't always follow them exactly and depending on the shape of person you're doing, what style, whether you want to be... Uh, looser, more stylized, or whatever, but this will set you up on the kind of right path initially uh, for drawing the basic form of heads and necks and bodies and whatnot. Um, so basically, what I would always do is whatever head you're drawing, you, you want to kind of follow the basic rule of you want a, an oval, something like that. And then you some people, you might have heard it said, create a shield and then through that shield you draw a line and that would give you roughly where the ears are at the top of the ear where the eyebrows are 
just under them are where the eyes are. The nose is in line with the bottom of the ear. The mouth would be around here and off you go. It's one way of doing it. Obviously everyone's heads are different, but if we just go a little bit fainter for this, again, you can see at the backs of the heads, there is different stages and, and of the head. You can see the shape of the head. We have a skull in there and it's a big old skull. And I think people sometimes forget this and sometimes drawings can become a bit thumb-like in their shape. And uh, yes, we can add our hair onto it and we can build it up, but ultimately we have that shape running through us. This is from a three quarters size side thing. If you are going straight on, we'll do a straight on one here. It's a bit more circular. So on this, it's someone looking this way. Again, you do your shield or your point. Now again, if someone's more square jawed, you can make that bigger. And then you kind of curve a line through that. You find your top point. Now some people call this the rule of thirds, the two one one method. I don't call it anything. I just basically try and sketch out the top of the head, roughly where the bottom of the head is, roughly where the ears are, where the eyes are going to be, where the bottom of the nose are going to be, and the mouth. And you can see it creates sections across. When you're straight on, again, from take it from the side, you bring up your kind of shield shape, you do a line down the middle, you roughly want to divide it into a bigger section. So maybe at those points, that would be where your ear would come in. At the bottom point would be where your nose would come in. Just underneath is your eyes. And somewhere in the middle, maybe your mouth. And then you can build out from there. So that's the basics of it, really. So oblong, if they're looking sideways. Circle, if you're looking straight on. Um, and if you're really looking in profile, then you can go a little bit more because you've got to get the tuck in of the neck on that one. When you're drawing the center line, always remember that your face isn't flat. So if I bring up a new layer and get rid of that one for a second, if you draw your, your egg shape, your oval, and you did your shield shape but if you just did a straight line down there you know <laughs> your nose would be flat you'd be going like that and then you are going into Giacometti long face territory which is all grand but ultimately if we're doing it a little bit more realistic you want that kind of egg shape and then that would tuck in on the neck your shield shape roughly and then remember the curve or the nose comes off the side if you're doing it in complete side profile so everything has to be you've got to imagine this as if it's a 3d entity it is not flat so again you kind of where your your top of your nose your line is roughly be your ear the bottom of maybe would be your nose bring your mouth out he's got quite a one Bring your jaw and your eyes would be underneath here somewhere and then there you go you're getting your basic shape it's not a, you know completely accurate because you've got a forehead to contend with that's quite a big nose I've done but you kind of get the gist of where I'm going with it it's a way of sketching in really loosely you could set your opacity way down on this so as you kind of refine it you get more detail but it's a starting point, isn't it? Now, another thing that we can do, if I get rid of that one, is use kind of points on the face to measure from. So if you've got your egg shape here, roughly, and we've done our shield kind of shape, if you will, and we've done our line, and we've got our ear, nose, mouth. That's going to be our eyebrows and our eyes somewhere just underneath here. So what you can do then is roughly bring up, so say you measure from the 
the corner of the eye or the bottom of the nose. So if you get the corner of the eye and you've got it going on here somewhere, okay, what you can then do is go, okay, so how far is that away from his ear? Am I getting that right? Does it look, or her ear, does it look about right? Does the ear kind of sit right? And then that gives you a point of reference, how wide the eye should be. You can start to see on the face that things correlate quite often. And if they don't, you'll start to see, because everyone's face is different and unique, that's what makes us special. Um, but you'll start to see that you'll start to see things in measurements. You'll start to see things that when something doesn't look right, you know, so again, you get the roundedness of the nose line. You'll start to see that one is that shape right? And then that brings up a different, you know, however you want to do it, but you'll start to see the measurements will start to work for you across the face. And when you draw one eye, you usually should draw the other one. I'm not been following that rule too well. But because then you'll roughly get it the same each time. And it just gives you the building blocks to start piecing it together. And before you know it, you've got quite a crudely drawn head, but it's a head and then the neck would kind of come down here maybe somewhere. Maybe not like that. That's pretty rubbish. But bear in mind, <laughs> you're not going to get it right every time. Some sketches of mine are absolutely hideous. Some of them are perfect bang on first time. Some of them work a little, need a bit of refining, but get loose. So those are the, the bare bones of, of what I try to do. So if you remember as you're doing it, look at the shape of the head, find your top and bottom on the paper of the of where you want it to start. So it gives you a, a point of reference on the sheet. Do your egg shape, whatever way they're looking. Your shield, just to show you that it can work the other way. Your ear would be roughly there. Roughly where they converge is going to be your eyebrow level. As you can see, it kind of comes to the top of the eye. And remember, if they're looking up, that would be rounded. If they're looking down, it would be that way. Uh, just underneath there is your ear. You've got your nose and then your mouth. And you can start to then build up a picture from there of the face. Don't think of it as I'm drawing eyes now, I'm drawing nose now. Just think of it as I'm, I'm drawing shapes. I'm drawing something that's going to piece together. And when, when it all kind of comes together, fantastic. Now, some artists and some illustrators very much poo-poo that you start with an eye and you do a fantastically detailed eye and, you know, you, you put all the work in. Uh, and they say you shouldn't do this. They say, you know, because ultimately you've got no reference points. All your reference point is in that one drawing and then to try and marry it up on the other side. Now, when I was at school, I used to draw like this. I started with the one eye. It's quite often what people will do. You're drawn to that area of the face. And who am I to tell you you're wrong? If it works and you get the end results that work for you, go for it, ultimately. That's, um, it's not for me to say. But the main problem with doing this is I've found is you will often end up with, unless you are very, very kind of controlling on your measurements and getting things right, because you've not done one eye and then the other eye, because you've focused all your effort. Quite often, as you'll see here, that's shifted too far to the right, that eye, and it will start to look a little bit weird and a little bit cartoony. And then you'll find you'll do that's wrong and everything will just start to look unusual and you will lose the kind of clarity of the face, you'll lose the structure. So it's better to start with this technique and build the picture up rather than go guns blazing and get the most detailed eye and the detailed nose you've ever drawn and then be disappointed and you can't follow that on with getting the proportions right okay so enough of those there's the basic thing so egg oblong shieldy kind of thing for the jawline 
and then roughly divide it up into either thirds or quarters, however you see fit, but it's not equal quarters, um, that's probably the wrong terminology to use, but divide it up to eyebrows, eyes just underneath, nose, mouth. That should give you the structure to build on. But let's draw some people now, let's get loose now. Again, like with everything, it doesn't always go to plan, and that's fine. Most of my drawings are done to then be painted on. So I can correct an awful lot of things. But I think the first thing I want to show you um, of how to uh, kind of attack a drawing, and we're going to be doing different faces from different angles, is I often get asked to do kind of rough sketches or scamps as they're sometimes called or storyboard images where we don't need much detail. We just need it to look like a person. Now we need it more than a stick man, but not much more. So let's have a little look at how we do that. And you'll see that through these different um, needs of my clients or what I'm working on, I'll still use those core techniques and methods that we've just been speaking about, but to different degrees. Okay, so let's get our reference images up. So who should we draw first? It doesn't really matter. Let's draw this old woman. And can I see her? Here she is. Let's make her a little bit bigger. Rebel 7 is really good. It's really good. I need to work on this a lot more. Okay, so we've got her, and she's got quite an unusual face. She's got one big eye that looks maybe like it's got a bit of cataracts on it. And I thought this would be a good face to kind of do because, again, no one's face is symmetrical. Um, you'll see a lot of YouTube videos showing the symmetry tool that you can do, only drawing on one side and it flips it on the other and makes it easier for you. Don't do that. It's not only a little bit cheaty, but no one's face is symmetrical. Everyone's got those little interesting quirks and foibles and points of difference on their face. And we want to capture that, okay? So, again, she's looking off over my shoulder. It's not quite a three quarters, but it's not far off. Okay, so. So, we've got her roughly lined up. Now, it's often a good little tip here. Uh, to, if you can, have your reference image roughly the same size as what you're going to draw. So we can make her a little bit bigger and a little bit more there. Uh, on Rebel, just so you know, I am using a 2B graphite pencil and I'm going to draw her over here because I can always shift her about in a little while. So she's looking slightly up, so you can see the oblongy shape. So we'll get the top roughly of where her hair's gonna be. We can see where her chin's gonna roughly finish. Uh, it'll be around in there. So we'll be drawing her within this area. So again, we'll get, let's get that loose, oblong, eggy shape. She's looking slightly up. There's the top of her head. Her hair might be coming a little bit higher, so maybe drop that down a little bit. And we've got a, our center line which is coming and coming through here and then we do our shield off there which we can build on on her like jowls and then she's got older people often have slightly bigger ears so we'll drop that down a little bit for the ear across for the mouth now her eyebrows are raised on this one so again like we said it's going to be curved because we're dealing with a a non-flat surface. It is, it's a, it's an ellipse. It's a spherical. It's 3D. It's alive. That's what we've got to remember. Okay, so, and we've got a roughly her rubber ear going across on there, which is slightly above the other one. So, that's a fine starting point. We don't have to think more than that. Her eye is going to be under here, and the other one about there, and her nose point. See, her mouth is in line with her, so her nose point is actually a bit higher. So we can use that little flick on here, if you see. So we can create that, and we know that it's slightly at an angle, and it will be maybe about there. Like I said, create some width lines. Uh, and off we go. So let's try and draw in. I'll probably realize this one's not got the eyebrows and the eyebrows up. It's probably a hard one to do. But 
we'll roughly sketch it out and we'll see how we go. So be confident with your lines. Don't try and feather it in too much because we'll, you lose a little bit of that immediacy. Just try and sketch it in roughly first and then we can always go around and build on that a little bit more. So we know that that bit of the eye, does that go through the center point? Yeah, a little bit. So we can bring that over a little bit more. And you'll see that a lot of artists will roughly sketch it out and then knock the opacity back on that layer, start a new layer and go over it in a little bit more detail. That's kind of like how comic book artists work a lot of the time. Um, sometimes I do that, sometimes I want to leave the guide marks on, but this is just a really loose sketch, like we said, for the first kind of instance. That's gone down to, see, we want that line going across there, so that's gone down a little bit too low. So we'll bring her up a little bit. Bring it round. Like I said, this is just the kind of scamp version. We want that angle to be about right, so that's probably a bit high. And her hair. She's got a line going there. And what we'll do is we'll build up onto the next one of how how we then take it to the next stage of detail. So again, she's got big eyes, big black arm, heavy eyelids. Now I didn't actually draw one eye and then the other eye. I kind of didn't even follow my, old, my own rules there. And that's fine because if you're in the flow and you're kind of finding that it's working and you're kind of getting somewhere, don't worry. It's no biggie. She's got a little line there. Nose comes up and over. This one, lady will be a great one to paint because of those shadows. But again, we're just doing a loose one. That great line there that kind of comes over creates that jowl, jowl, and then one that comes down, and then she's got that fantastic mouth with all these cracks and crevices, that tells a story, doesn't it? And then that one that comes down, and a little flick, a little jowl again. Okay, we'll do a quick hair in. We'll do some of these wrinkles. We've got quite a cool quiff going on. And remember, as you're working, as my old art, art teacher used to tell me, I'll, I'll say a lot of these things, but if you're not looking, you're lying, he used to say. And basically, keep your eyes flicking over to the reference image. If you spend too long on the drawing bit, you'll be making it up. You're, you will be putting your own slant on it way too much. If you want it to look like the person, keep looking. Now, this isn't going to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. It's a very quick one to kind of show you how we can build things up. But if you start cheating the system by not looking, you will get nowhere near where you want to be. So that here comes out a little bit more. And you can see here again, measuring there, that little jowly bit that we've got kind of going on there around her chin, comes down. And then she's got another bit there, and another bit there. And the bottom of her cardi is going there. Comes 
comes up. Her neckline is in line with this kind of thing here. And then her shoulder kind of comes off and round. Right. So that would be more than enough for me to send as a as a kind of rough to a client of maybe for storyboarding or I mean, it's probably even a bit more detailed than it needs to be for storyboarding. But that would be more than enough to kind of show what's in my head as a sketch. I, I wouldn't do a stick man, but I would do that. You saw it only took a, a minute or two. But when I send something to someone which has to be a little bit more detailed, I'll often explain to them that I will put lines on the face showing where I want the paint to go. Now that's a guide for me, so sometimes I have to explain why it's got that on it. So on this lady here, you when you when I paint, because I paint quite loosely and thickly, you want to create the kind of contours with the paint lines to kind of show the structure of the face. And so in order for me to kind of my brain to to see that, often I'll sketch those kind of lines in. So you'll see on the forehead there, she's got a couple of diagonals there. We've got this lovely shadow of the um, glasses, which kind of come right the way around here. And that kind of creeps around here. And then there's another build up there. And as you can see, I'm just starting to refine it a little bit more now because we want that little bit more detail going into the picture to kind of suggest where we're going to take the paint and I might show some depth in there uh -huh. and we're just building it up now this is again this is when when I when I send my work like sketch state stages to a client, they want to see that it looks like the person. They they know it's only a sketch stage, but they want to see roughly where you're going with this. But I will say I've left some guides in there for, for me. So you can see here on her cheekbones, we're going to... Okay, so as you can see here with the cheekbones, I want to create that kind of idea that she's got undulating skin going on. So that line kind of comes in. So basically we just take everything we've done in those first instances and build on them. We're trying to refine it a little bit, create that kind of 3D-ness without going to the nth degree yet because we're not at that stage. And just Correcting any errors. Since he's got that. Yeah. We'll just take that back. Remember, you have an erase button for a reason. You can use a rubber. Now, I'm not one of these artists who will do di eyes and different things on different layers to then move them around or use the transform tool. I kind of see it. Show the marks. You've, you've built the face up, it's your sketch, who cares? I don't want to, if I've got the eyes slightly wrong, I'll rub them out and do them again. I don't like, it feels too detracted from, especially working digitally, you, 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 it feels too, too detracted from the real world medium um, of doing you know sketches on paper. Well, if I sketch on paper, I can't just sh suddenly shift the eye across because I feel it's a centimeter out of the way. So why would I do that? when I work digitally. It just feels alien to me. But again, each to their own. Do you do you. If you want to use that, you use that.
Uh, like that. So again, this would be ideal for me to send now to a client. It looks pretty like the lady. It's about right. Maybe it could just do with being a little bit wider in certain areas, but it's certainly enough to kind of go on and to show them what's in my mind and where we're up to. But let's get a little bit more detail in it again. Let's take it to the next degree. So we'll drop down the color so it's a little bit darker and we'll just drop down the size a smidge. And this is where you'd kind of use a bit, getting your reflections right on the eye, little details like that. But we'll speed up the process on this one for now. Okay, so we're kind of there. Uh, that's more than enough. Her face is probably a little bit narrow, but it's my painting of it, and I can always fill that out at the end a little bit. We can uh, we can build that a little bit wider if we need to, if I feel that's the need. But hopefully that shows you roughly how I kind of go about. We started with the oval, the egg. We got the lines. The nose, the eyes, the eyebrows, the mouth, roughly in there, top and bottom of the head, left and right of the head, and we built up from there. Um, it's not perfect, but it's a good one. So let's see some more heads, and uh, we'll see how we go from there. Okay, so now you've seen it in a little bit more detail, we're just going to get a little bit looser, a bit quicker on these ones, just to kind of show you different head positions, shapes, um, and show you how the rules still apply. So unbeknown to me, my camera battery had run out and hence why I've gone dark. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a little voiceover while I'm speeding through this, um, just to kind of talk you through how the process went. But as you can see, this fella's face is quite unusual. So I had to almost stretch those rules that we spoke of in the beginning, that the, the rule of thirds almost went out of the window because he had quite a large nose, it was quite hard to kind of get the angles right of it, and it was veering more into the stylistic or caricature-esque kind of way. But, you know, through kind of muddling on, playing with my lines, working on the angles, um, I was actually quite happy with the end result, and it was, again, more than enough to, to take to the painting stage. Okay, my battery ran out, so we're back on. Uh, let's get to the next one. So, another quick one here. This chap's looking down, so it's slightly different again. Same rules apply. Let's get sketching. Now this fella, this gentleman has a great shaped head. 
Although he's looking down and he's got a beard and it was quite tough because uh, you couldn't really see where his mouth was underneath that big bushy moustache. So it was a great one to draw and I was probably happier with these next couple of ones than the old lady drawing. But that's the way it goes. Not everyone works uh, perfectly. And again, I probably took it to more than I would do to get to painting stages. I probably put more detail in, but I kept it as loose as I could. And you can see I'm using broad strokes with the, the pencil and same rules apply. You know, I got my overly shape there tilted down. Um, I did the shield kind of just in from the back of the skull line and then that gave me the guides to work on for the ear and the hairline and the eyes across the way and again I'm really looking forward to painting this one he's got such a kind of ruddy face and it's uh, with the reds and his the color of his jacket everything kind of it just screams out to be painted this I was really really happy with how it all went and um, so I did the first kind of pass on it and then took the pencil down a little bit darker to kind of refine some of the details and go over it a little bit more just to kind of show you again if you wanted a bit more finished sketch this is what you would do i would probably paint from where i was now and kind of make it up as i go along with the brush strokes but i suppose in the previous videos drawings i kind of drew some of the faces quite detailed and because people were asking how how it was done i thought i'd show this in in its entirety Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Took about 10 minutes or so. Proportions are all there. You know, we can something we can build on and something we can paint on. Um, yeah, quite happy with that. Definitely paintable from that stage. It's not perfect. It doesn't look exactly like him, but it's my version of him. And that's what we've been trying to say, isn't it? It's, um, it's our interpretation of what we see in the world around us. And that's what's important. Okay, next up was this uh, fisherman uh, with his hat on. I think he's a fisherman, it looks like going by the netting and his hat. Um, and I, again, I was really happy with the way this turned out as this kind of sketch. It's not perfect, again, but it, it was something, I, I just thought it captured him quite well, the sadness in his eyes. He had such a, an interesting face, um, these kind of really kind of sorrowful eyes and his big ears and the crags in his skin. Um, it was a really, really fun to draw, but because those lines on his face gave you kind of lots and lots of anchor points. Um, I often find drawing kind of young girls, young women, uh, with smoother skin, maybe more makeup on, a lot harder because you can't see the contours, you can't see those kind of reference points. You have only the eyes, nose, mouth maybe to work on. So these kind of craggy chaps, um, I really like painting them as well because they've got more texture, but they, I find them a little bit easier to draw. So again, the same rules, this was kind of more straight on, but did the oval, got the eye line where the ears are. Now he again, he has quite large ears, but he had a long face, so it kind of stayed in proportion to find that mouth line and um, just below his quite wide tash. Um, but really kind of happy with how it turned out and hopefully it's conveying to you that it doesn't have to look perfect in the end especially if you're going on to to painting these things but if you use the the kind of rough guides um, or find a way that works for you along those lines you should end up with something that's a looks like the person roughly and b that's if you're going to go on to paint it it's definitely a great starting point Now, although on this one here, I kind of gave up on it a little bit, really, if I'm being completely honest. The angle of the head and the shadow of the chin, it just threw me off a little. And I wanted to keep it in there to show you that these things don't always go to plan. 
we can't always get things right first time. And although at the end of it, I was actually quite happy with the way her face looked, um, just wasn't working for me in the sketch kind of period of it. And I thought I would have to twist it too much and overwork it and it would get muddy and messy. But I wanted to leave it in there because these are honest videos. I'm, I'm being honest with you about the process. And I wanted to kind of show that we don't get it right every time and that's fine, that's really, we learn from those mistakes and actually if I'd have continued it maybe something beautiful would have come out of it. But for the purpose of this video I wanted to show you that just persevere, um, keep with it and if it's going wrong don't overwork it, start again. So we're only doing sketches at this stage and um, we're not doing final pieces, we're not wasting paper, we're not wasting any kind of time, we are learning as we go. Okay, for this one we're going to do a little bit different. Uh, we're going to use the charcoal tool uh, just to show you the same principles apply. Um, we've got this chap looking down here. Let's see how it goes now again. Bear with me, I've not used Rebel 7 very much, but we'll see how we go. So we've got this lovely charcoal tool. So we're going to do our egg. And he's looking down, isn't he? So the egg could probably go a bit that way. And he's looking down and again people use charcoal completely different there's lots of different ways of doing it his, hair. his eyebrows would be across here but because he's looking down and we're just going to build it up now again this might not work <laughs> this might be hideous but Let's see where we go. I'm just going to, I know I said I don't use digital tools, but I've just made his head a little bit too big there with the charcoal brush. So let's go again. So we're just trying to feather in his ears, probably come around here a little bit more. His hair fly away. And let's make that a little bit more quite neat on Rebel when you you can see the size of the brush that's going to be on the canvas before you do it. Now, there we go, we're back on. So, we're just going to be using the wide one now just to kind of get the shapes in. And then we'll refine it, hopefully, with a bit of detail. But again, you've got that central line that's kind of coming down. So his mouth is just off. Yeah, we're going to need a bit of detail kind of coming in here. But I do like this charcoal brush. This is the charcoal wide, it's called. But it's got a lovely effect. Let's bring that around. We'll work fast again just to kind of show you. how it goes. So he's got that shadow, the eyebrows, he's got divots. And remember we're working on a circle. Now this guy, I picked this one because he has an unusual shaped head again. Everyone is different. And like I said, this might not work. This might look really, really bad. Might actually just make that a whole area darker. But we're trying new things, aren't we? And I want to show you that it doesn't always go to plan. And sometimes you've got to work at it a bit. See that big chin and the t shirt comes up and round. But if you're drawing someone, like I said at the beginning, for a quick scamp, a quick, a quick impression, if you're out and about and you're just doing some quick character studies, be loose, be expressive, don't worry too much about getting it completely bang on. We can always go back and especially when you're working from reference photos. You can always go back and address issues and work things out again. 
Man, this guy's got about a million and one different partings going on. And I've probably done that way too high there. But we'll add some detail on in a minute and see if we can bring this round to something that's looking roughly like him. Let's put a bit higher his t-shirt line. Bring that up a bit wider. Few bits. Okay, so we've got a very loose, rough, pretty rubbish thing, but let's, uh, is it charcoal too that I quite like? So let's try and bring in some of our detail now and see if we can't make this. It's like Dudley out of the Royal Tenenbaums, make yours like mine. This has got quite a bit of pressure sensitivity, this brush. So you've got to be a little bit ginger with it. When you push hard on it, it goes like bilio. Probably should have used one of the other ones, but again, we're experimenting, aren't we? Just trying to find our way. I'd be very delicate with this one. But it's a nice brush to use, and I just wanted to show you doing it with a different brush that you, you can get different techniques, different effects with different things, and it might fit your style more using something like this where it's a it's a chunkier brush and you can get these lovely little flicks and movements and it might just be that this works better for your style and so I didn't want to do it all on the same brush in case you kind of got involved in the tutorial or the video and you thought god none of this is working for me Phil what are you doing um, well, it's fast approaching the school run for me looking at the time so I'm going to speed up a little bit and hopefully you'll get the gist of what I'm doing but if you do get Rebel I certainly recommend you not just sticking with the pencils there we go, just a little bit too heavy handed with that one have a go with some of the other ones because they're fantastic And you can just get these lovely quick marks, which again, I've probably just messed up because they're a little bit close to his face. There we go, that's the line. But you can get these little quick expressive marks, which might just suit your way of working better. I like working with a pencil, but actually, with now that I've got this program, I might mix it up a little bit going forward and um, oh, I just took that chin mark too far across I might mix it up a little bit more and start using the other tools uh, that are at hand to me to try and see how it affects my style will it affect my style because we can always adapt and learn and I love experiment and experimenting with new new apps and new programs it's how I kind of got into digital art entirely was by experimenting and some things worked some things didn't but I my style certainly loosened when I did start 
using digital art because when you're using traditional mediums sometimes you're often a little bit worried when you're first starting out about because you might be on a budget about wasting paint making a mess um, you know all those kind of things the trappings of life and um, when you move on to digital you can be far more expressive and you're not wasting any paper and you're not causing anyone any harm and you're not getting paint on the dog and or the children and uh, I found that my style for my personal work very much changed and I thought that was a good thing really because I not only did it completely change my career path because I don't think I would have been spotted just doing my paintings and drawings and what not in real kind of mediums unless I'd have been really lucky but um, I truly don't think I would have been spotted or had my work seen or picked up on like I did when I switched to digital I was very very fortunate and I'll make a video of how I got involved in this malarkey and maybe some hints and tips if you're considering venturing into the world of digital art as a career yourselves maybe I could I don't know impart a little bit of hopefully a bit of knowledge I don't know maybe a little bit of background of how I did it there's a lot of luck involved I'll tell you that and a lot of luck a lot of hard work but um, I think I'll make one of those videos if that's what you want to see tell me in the comments below and if there's anything specific you'd like me to kind of do a video on obviously this video there's been a lot of people asking what's your drawing process how do you go from blank to sketch because we see the the painting bit but we don't often see or the drawing bit is often sped up because I don't want to bore you with stuff but then other people in the comments lovely people have been saying oh we love you chatting I could watch you drawing for ages and I think they're being a bit kind but I, I did like hearing it so thank you if that was you um, but I try and get back to every single comment as possible so let me know if you want to see something specific um, let me know if there's anything I can do or a future tutorial or an artist you want me to tackle in one of my mashups um, I've had a few callings for Sergeant John Singer Sergeant that could be on the horizon um, I've got a few other ideas for a few videos as well coming down the line so not all portraiture maybe do something else um, yeah so there's plenty of scope but I want this to be a channel um, and a you know YouTube that involves you guys as much as possible because I just want to make videos that people want to see um, and that I enjoy doing I am making them obviously I started out making them very much for myself but if I can help and uh, impart a little bit of knowledge I don't know like I said there's a million and one people on YouTube who are doing absolutely superb stuff which I'm very jealous of so <laughs> don't always listen to me but there you go. That only took a couple of seconds, didn't it? It needs a bit of work. But it's more than enough to work on. And just to show you that you can use the other brushes, other things, um, I will be showing you. Let's do a bit of powder on there while we're here. Um, painting like I said in the in the intro painting in an alla prima style so basically no um, pencil work at all it's all going to be painted direct from the brush straight on no messing about which is an exciting way to work tough sometimes 
but really exciting and you get some really nice unexpected results you doing that um, and it can really loosen you up and again open the door to to many avenues that you might not have thought of what does dust do let's do a bit of that Whoa, look at that we'll add a bit of dust around his hair right so again it's by no means perfect but it's a starting point and a few of these lines I would probably take out they're a bit heavy but it's showing you there's other tools you can use there's other tools at your disposal which you could untap something that works for you oh, a bit heavy handed Phil still getting to use to this brush a little bit there you go so we'll um, let's transform him a little bit smaller we can have a little look at what we've done that should be about right so we've got various poses there uh, from straight arm to completely side to three quarters to looking slightly away to a tough one where it was looking up and then looking down again kind of semi three quarters but using a different medium so i hope it's given you a, a little taste of how i approach things and um, again take bits that you like take bits that mean something to you that you think could work in your workflow everyone is completely different as i've reiterated many many times but it's not magic it's not um a, a god-given you know skill it's something that can be learned uh, with practice and um, i don't probably sketch enough like this uh, i kind of go full barrel into the work and I, I like sketching like this i might do it more i want to be more looser i really enjoyed the charcoal one just then but the more practice you do the better the results and you'll start to find your feet of what works, whether it's the 211, whether you find a video online like the, the Loomis method or the Riley method, and you go, yep, yeah, that's perfect for me. And that is great. You might, like I said, magpie certain bits from certain areas, or you might just go gun ho and just start with the eye and just go, you know, stick two fingers up to fill and just say, no, I'm gonna do it my own way. And that's cool as well. If you're happy with the results at the end of it, that's all that matters. And if you want to do more stylized work, you just elongate the figures or you widen them or you be playful with proportion. Um, and ultimately don't listen. If someone says that doesn't look like them, it doesn't matter. That's the way you, I've just realized I've been looking at the screen and not at the camera, I'm sorry. It's for you to, decide on that isn't it it's um it's up to you it's what you see in here it's what you see out of your eyes it's not what other people suggest to you and if you make them squat faced and wide and long like medigliani i love saying just medigliani what a word um then that's the way you want to paint it so don't listen to them do your own thing be bold with it be brave and keep practicing and getting that looseness is the main thing that you, we need to do getting that flow of your pencil to be working quicker so you're not getting bogged down in detail but i hope the videos helped um, like i said these aren't perfect perfect most of them would be taken to the next level at painting and any little problems or issues we've got at this stage we can sort out as we go but i hope it's giving you a little taster of my process and I hope it can help you and develop your process going forward. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one when we paint these bad boys. Bye-bye.